Welcome back, everybody, to Crusader Kings 2, the adventures of Antecedent, extremely of the Scions of the First Dawn. Sorry, extremely the true steel of the Scions of the First Dawn. How could I forget his full title there? Yesterday, we repelled both Odin and the Celtic Pantheon. God knows how. We got very, very lucky with some of the battles. Some we lost. There were some drawbacks to it, but it was after quite a long and protracted war. We were able to win them both. That gave us a ridiculous amount of gold, both of which I invest immediately straight back into the capital here. We started building ourselves a grand fortress. This is going to take years, so we, we, we might not see this during Antistan extremely his lifetime, but his descendants will have a great fortress. And then, of course, over here, we built ourselves a grand cathedral. Now, I asked you guys, what do we want to call the provinces where we've now taken up home? You know, our, our last bastion if you will, of the Catholic faith. There were two names that were almost tied for top comment. There was the Citadel of the First Dawn, and there was also Sanctus Dei, Dei, D-I. Uh, I guess that means God, right? So what I've done is, is because they were both really good suggestions, because of course we've got two islands, I thought that it would be appropriate to name the island with the Grand Fortress, the, the Citadel of the First uh, of the, the first scions, and then all the first dawn, sorry. And then, of course, in the other one, where we've got the Grand Cathedral, Sanctus Dei would be God's, God's Sanctum, I assume. So we've got the Grand Cathedral there as well. That seems the most appropriate, and those are really, really cool names as well. At the end of last episode, we were called into a war, the Second Russian Holy Roman Flower War. So a flower war, like I said, is not one to grab land. It's not a grand invasion or anything along those lines. It's just a war to kill and pillage. That's all they're going to get from this, just a bunch of prisoners. So we need to get over here and help defend the Catholic system. This is innocent Catholic men and women being annihilated by these false gods. We need to go and stop them as soon as possible. Another thing people have been suggesting massively is to use the cash that we've got in the bank with China to send an invasion. But of course, the Mongols have spawned. So until that's been dealt with, we are not going to be able to interact with China. Or at least we're not going to be able to send an invasion or anything major. Uh, to, to We're not going to be able to like send them after Zeus, which was the big suggestion. So unfortunately, we're going to have to wait for this problem to solve itself first. And then hopefully... I doubt it'll happen, but hopefully if uh, Si Hai Long Wang here wins the war against the Mongols, we'll keep our keep our grace. If not, it might be a good idea to start search for another quality 5 artifact to shift over to the new emperor, who is most likely going to be uh, a, a Mongol emperor instead. So, we'll try and track down a quality 5 artifact, the quality 5 heretical artifact that we have no need for, but might be a nice trinket for China. Then with that, we could send the Chinese the, the new, I guess it would be Tengri, wouldn't it? Because it's the Mongol Empire that have sworn, and of course Tengri is in charge of that, so one of his children maybe, I believe, you could put on the throne of China. That's what we did when we played as uh, Julius Nepos. So it, one of his kids will be made the Chinese Emperor, so we could ask one of these guys to go after Olympus. Then it will be Tengri versus Zeus. To, I mean, I mean Tengri is a sky god, right? So it will be essentially two sky gods fighting one another. That would be kind of cool. At our behest, and then we'll kill whoever wins. I think that'll be that'll be glorious. Good work, everyone. Let's t make the make the heathens fight themselves, and we can all laugh at them. Anyway, we need to go defend some loyal and just Catholic peoples. Let's go and stop them. So again, we do have that slightly higher law now. If we go over to our technology tab here, no, if we go over to our laws tab here, I even said it was a law. We have total mobilization. Now this is going to give us a bunch of gold if we are successful here. There's a lot of land in Russia which is very very difficult for them to defend. There's a lot of tribes here who actually have a surprisingly massive garrison. What the hell? I was going to say we should be able to turn up and siege it down very quickly, but that's really not the case at all. I guess having a god in charge of your entire empire... My god, they are large now. Having a god in charge of your entire empire, it turns out it might be somewhat beneficial to them. Let's see if we can at least get some gold out of this war and, of course, defend our defend our fellow Catholics in the process if we can. Uh, keep those boats there. Let's get these boys straight on those boats there. Where are all of our levies? Oh, I guess they still haven't quite recovered from the war with Odin and the war with, uh, with the Celtic gods, huh? This should be enough to at least do a little bit of damage. I don't think we're going to be able to win this war entirely. But we should be able to at least defend some Catholics. And, of course, get a little bit of gold out of it too. Which we can use to invest straight back into the realm. Let's get these guys on boats. Now, I think this is probably the quickest way. Um, do you want to just go straight through the med? I was going to say, I think that's probably the quickest thing. We can't sail up rivers, can we? No, we definitely can't. That's a shame. So we go land in around Ukraine. Or what is modern day Ukraine. Obviously head up through to their capital in Kiev. How defended is their capital? They have a tiny garrison there. Holy shit, we could try and take the capital. That would do a, a decent amount of damage, huh? Don't need those extra boats. Thank you very much. This could be big. Now, of course, we're leading the troops. We'll leave Archangel Lubbock at home to actually train up some troops and help rebuild our levies, which have been just utterly destroyed by these last few years. I don't think we need any more help than what we've got already, you know. There's a limit to how much damage we're going to be able to do with 7,000 troops at the end of the day. So this is our... 
Zawa Air. Who do we want to play as us when we... I mean, who have we got left in the Deus Vault dynasty right now? So, willingly married off into... My grandson was the king of Bohemia for a while. I didn't even notice that. Galahad's children are probably the ones we're going to end up playing as here. So, we've got Extremely, who is very good. Extremely Deus Vault is very, very good. Uh, or at least he's got okay traits there. Sympathy for Muslim religions. Oh, that's something else I need to talk about in a second. Leon is, is also pretty good, but doesn't have very good traits at all. Man, his education is going to really suffer. Like, guess we'll have to go diplomacy there. Um, extremely had a bastard daughter who is, who is again, okay. Inherited our bloodline, though, which is, uh, which is very weird. Um, yeah, you know what? I think we will probably go for in this situation. Although, Brandamina, whoever she is, our granddaughter, is actually very good as well. Just, ambitious, charitable, diligent. She is she is a virtuous ruler. You know, being being just and charitable and diligent means that she would be a good Christian. And she's got that angelic blood. She's only 16. Um, extremely is proud, shy, deceitful. Maybe not so good. In fact, he is a wicked character. He lives a life of sin. Maybe we should try and play as her. We're not... Are we agnostic, cognatic? Like, how does that work? We're just elective. Oh my god, we could just elect her. Wow, okay. So, our our daughter, willingly. 22 Marshall. Very, very powerful there. We've got, perhaps, she is our granddaughter, I assume. 21 Marshall as well. I'm very, very tempted to go for her just because she is the most just and sort of gallant ruler. She's the most one... The, the one who's most likely to succeed in, uh, in the Archangel Libergette's training. I'm going to vote for her. I'm going to vote for her for the time being, just until we see how this kid comes out. Um, oh man, deceitful or cruel. Yeah, you are not going to be a very good Catholic ruler, are you? Certainly not qualities befitting of someone to receive an angelic blessing. Greetings, Prior Extremely. Hello, my friend. He wants us to, oh, of course, vote in the order. Now, I did say, why don't we leave the Knights Templar? And, and some people seem on board with this, and I definitely think it would be a good idea to start getting rid of cruel, getting rid of deceitful, coming back to our old Christian way. We've only got four out of the seven, the seven virtues now. We don't want to become a fallen angel. That would suck. So, we're going to leave the Knights Templar, seeing as we've got our own, you know, we've got our own Holy Order at this point, right? We're, we're in charge of the, the Knights of the Signs of the First Dawn. So, being part of the Knights Templar, we were just affiliated with them anyway. Let's join the Benedictine Order instead. What do we need for that? We've just got to wait. Okay, we actually fulfill all of the uh, all of the necessary requirements there. I'm a simple man. Thank you. I think I just accepted a bribe from that dude. I didn't mean to do that. Sorry. Okay, we'll join the Benedictine Order in, uh, so sort of like basically two months. Let's go for Kiev. W while, while things are fine, while we're not going to be distracted by, you know, Benedictine, meditation, whatever else, let's gun for this capital and see if we can't do some serious, serious damage to Perun here. Maybe, I don't know, could we get some of his kids prisoner? Or are they all, oh my god, he's got so many children. He's married a god. Who is she? Who is she and why is she a god? Wait, what? She's Piast, Teresa Mokosh. Oh, that's his wife by default, isn't it? That's who he starts being married to, right? Angela? Yeah, okay. Sorry, I was very confused. I was like, who the, who the hell is she? She is apparently a draconic worshipper. She flipped over to the dragon religion. Zero purity. God knows what's going on there. How strange. Her, her own, his own wife is uh, is some strange little dragon worshipper. Okay, very weird. I was, I, for the second that I thought the game had completely lost its mind and just assigned this random woman as his wife. I'll stop this immediately, hang the corporates. You know what? We are a holy order. We need to act that goddamn way. Strong leader. And of course we would gain strong leader because we are the strongest of leaders. 59%. Um, you kind of hope that occupying the capital would give more than that. To be fair, it gave 7% war score. Let's go for the whole thing. Let's knock this capital on its ass. And that should give us, not only will it give us obviously the gold there, but it is going to hopefully cripple him for quite a while too. It's got quite a lot of defenders here. I'm going to assault these down because we've got Extremely leading the armies. And Extremely is a very, very powerful commander. We probably want to gun for their troops as well at some stage. We got them down to minus 48%. Holy shit, we might be able to win this war. Um, how many troops have you got, Kiev? 23,000. And where would they be? Where's he leading troops? So he's somewhere around here. Now, if he's got the full, you know, 23,000 stack in one army, we're not going to be able to do damage to that. We're not going to be able to stop him here. Eagle Talon, what is that? The fierce talent of a great eagle hunted down and slain by Perun after a long and perilous journey. I have no idea what that is. I guess it's something uh, religion specific there. Let's take out some of these armies and let's uh, sort of get some scouting going on against their troops here. We'll send my son extremely to go and see if he can track down their armies. Okay, it's a, it's a 19,000 stack. Really glad I checked that first. Um, And Perun is personally leading those troops, yeah? Okay, we definitely don't want to fight that. We definitely do not want to fight that. Let's just stick to the coast. Sort of siege down whatever we've got. Act as a distraction to stop them killing more innocent Catholics. What are they going to do? They're probably just counting siege their capital. We can just basically siege our way back to the boat in the meantime. Just cause some problems for them, essentially. Right, there we go. They are trying to chase it down. They're taking attrition. Oh, this could be big. 
Again, we haven't really got the troops to be fighting them. Unless we had double the troops, I wouldn't feel comfortable fighting a god leading a 17,000 stack of an army. Um, who are you? Jordan de Montpellier. Okay, great. Jordan must learn on his own. Oh, another thing as well that I actually completely forgot to mention that I said I would mention earlier. A lot of you have pointed out, of course, the islands of Mallorca and, and Menorca here are still, uh, are, are still, oh shit, this one's actually Catholic. But our capital is sunny because, of course, they, they generally start sunny. So we need to start proselytizing. Now, I actually tracked someone down and there's a weird backstory to this one. I tracked down a guy called Galileto Madness. And yeah, you're, though, that is right. He is indeed a demigod. So over in Venice, I set up, uh, as it was requested by one of the patrons, I set up this, this weird sort of Isle of Madness that was going on. They were originally a bunch of pagan gods. Just a random, like the, the, the religion, pagan. A bunch of loosely affiliated gods of madness, gods of insanity, that type of thing. This was the original guy, slain somehow, god knows how, died of severe stress, that's incredible. And then his descendants quickly flipped over to Catholicism. So like the Grand Master of the Knights of Sardinia was a member of House Madness. And now our court chaplain is a, is a, a now devout Catholic priest proselytizing on our behalf. What a, what a cool story for those guys. So we've got him in charge of hopefully converting this island to... Uh, to somewhere where we can say is a true Catholic stronghold. Because right now, obviously, it being sunny is a little bit strange there. Culture, I don't really know how we can convert that besides just having super, super high prosperity. I don't think there's any features added by Mythos, for example, that would allow us to convert that. So we'll just keep a close eye on that for the time being and see how that goes. In the meantime, let's keep running away from this god. This, I was going to call him a goddamn god, but yeah. Let's keep running away from Perun, because if he catches us, we are in for some real shit. Um, yeah, he's actually reinforcing now. He's gone from losing his troops to attrition to reinforcing 850 soldiers a month. Let's get back on the boat and just wait for him to go away. Goodbye, Perun. Thank you. He's, he's going to try and counter siege, I guess, for a little bit. Right, there we go. We'll keep our spy master sort of shadowing him. We'll, we'll keep following him with the spy master and make sure that he's not going to be able to track us down. Okay, how long till we can move you again? 13th of May. To be honest, I'm feeling confident enough just to go back for it, and we can rejoin our Holy Order now as well. So let's go for the Benedictine Order. It's a great honor, Conversus. This gives the stewardship, lowers our fertility. I think that's irrelevant at that stage anyway, but the stewardship's going to be a nice bonus just in case we do fancy building any more, you know, subholdings, that type of thing. Let's quickly assault these down. This is good. This is a nice distraction because not only have they not gained any more war score, but we've, we're obviously actively taking away war score from them. As long as we stick near the coast, we can always retreat if things start looking like they're going to get out of hand. Citadel of the First prospers. Great news. I, w I did want it to be the Citadel of the uh, of the First Dawn, but unfortunately First Dawn doesn't fit. So it's just Citadel of the First, which to be honest also sounds kind of cool and it's, it's you know kind of close enough. Kind of somewhat somewhat apprehensive to be diving into provinces where we are nearby fog of war. I wouldn't be surprised if that army creeps back immediately and smashes us. But we're doing a really good job here. Back down to minus 41%. Who are you? The foul fanatic extremely? Oh, no. Okay. So House Kumrai have declared their invasion war on us. You might remember that we had that start in the last episode. I was keeping an eye on it, but they've, they've ended up with 15,000 men. Could be a concern because, of course, we only have 11,000 men right now. And we're on the other side of the world. So let's get quickly back to our capital as soon as possible here. Um, and where is he coming from? Where is his house? Uh, come back here. Oh, minus 38%. We actually... I think we've helped out a lot. I think we've done our best. Now we've got to come back and make sure that we're not losing this. Especially while the fortress is still in its early stages. We can't really afford to, uh, to be too far away from things. So Seville. Okay. So they're coming via Gibraltar most likely, so their, their boats are obviously going to come around through the fog of war. We don't have any we don't have any vision on these. So what I probably want to do is move my spy master over to like one of their capitals. That gives us view on the Western Mediterranean. I really should have gone for the Strait of Gibraltar instead, because they could go through the Mauritanian coast. The AI is not that smart. I'm gonna be honest, the AI is not that smart to try and avoid us seeing their troops. Good luck with you all, HRE. They're down to minus 38%. That's all we can really do. They are genuinely on their own at this stage. Let's go pick up troops from Provence. Let's raise our armies, which I assume have reinforced somewhat. Now, again, we probably want to bait them out. We probably want to make sure their troops are trying to land and attack us. Then we'll move in when they've landed. So we'll leave them there. They'll most likely try and attack uh, Menorca, or as it's called now, Sanctus Di. Um, I need to find out how you actually pronounce that. Otherwise, people are going to be screaming at me in the comment section. Let's get these boats back, pick up our troops from Provence, try and bait them out. And then once we've got their troops... Wait, where are they going? Are they actually going to march up to Provence? Weird tactic. Bold strategy, Cotton, but it might pay off. Um, I was kind of hoping we could... Oh, my God. They just grabbed most of Northern Africa. This is worrying. Did they just... Did Satan just lose a whole bunch of land? 
Ironic, isn't it, that, that patrician set, uh, Patriarch Satan the Betrayer is, is being weakened as much as Catholicism is right now. Good. Let's get you guys on board. Siege of Kiev. Okay, they've very... Again, I'm not, I'm not going to concern myself with that war at all unless we are guaranteed to be winning this one. Maybe I'll go and help them out when we're like, you know, 78% war score in our own defensive war here. I was kind of expecting them to send some boats over. I'm a little disappointed because they do have enough boats there, quite clearly, that just aren't moving. That's like I was saying yesterday, the invasion caster's bell like, gives you boats, it will spawn in boats for you. So I guess we'll just sit here and wait. I mean, they, they might end up going to Provence, at which point we might want to obviously go and fight them. That's exactly what they're doing. God's blessing upon me, Donatus extremely. Thank you. Bringing the truth, faith, and salvation to others is the month. The holiest of duties to want us to build a church. Um... We haven't got one here. In fact, we have to build one here. We can't build anything else. We can build a church in a single day. Such is the might of extremely... And Oh my god, he's wearing... He's gone full on monk now. There you go. Boom. A whole new temple. You're welcome, my friend. That was that was the most holy thing I could have done, I think. Um, Is this a trap? I mean, they only have 15,000 men, right? So most likely not. Oh, he's got 19,000 men. This could be a trap. But I don't think... Again, the AI is not that smart. It, it would just be coincidence, if anything else. Let's get our boats over there. Let's send some troops over to go and defend Provence. Um, What the... What are they doing? <gasps> we lost the trade deceitful. My wish to become a better Catholic has led me to rule of the St. Benedict. Once I used lies and deceit to get out of trouble and fulfill my desires, following the path of St. Benedict has taught me better. This was a good shout. I feel like this is this is absolutely going to ensure that we are staying on the right true path here. Let's get you guys... Ah, damn it. We slightly reinforced too much there. That's a real shame. Okay, get everyone on these boats then. Can we split these anymore? 8,000 men. How many men have they got on the mainland? Oh, God. Oh, all of their troops are heading up there now. You know what? I'm going to do something weird here. Let's move you guys up to, up to here just to save a tiny, tiny little bit of time. Move these ones over here. And what I'm going to do is march them off of the boats... Quickly go and pick up our other troops. Oh, God. We landed into a, an enemy. Oh, we're fine, though, because we are leading uh, We're leading the troops there. We should be more than okay. Quickly get these guys on the boats as well. And then we'll go and stop them sieging down too many of our... Yeah, we're at minus 7%. They're going to go for Provence first. Wasn't expecting that. I really wasn't expecting that at all. I thought they'd have gone for, you know, the places with a decent amount of war score. Right, merge these together. Let's get our best commanders on here. Might now be the time we bring out Brother Lubbaget. I'm going to. I just want to make sure this goes, because obviously this is a massive risk. If we fail this, then we lose everything. So we definitely can't afford to be messing around with this one. This sounds like a solid investment. Only 290 gold for 30 military tech points. You know what? I think I'm good. Thank you. What's our tax then in that case? Oh my god, these boats are expensive. Now we can put the boats down, because I guess the majority of their armies are there, huh? Get rid of these guys. My god, this is costing us a fortune. Minus 15 gold, minus 49 gold per month. And we're making a lot of money as well to say that we've only got these small amount of provinces. Right, this is risky. 16,000 versus 13,000. Obviously, we've got these insanely good commanders. They are religious enemies. So the angel trait inherently isn't super OP. 50% damage against relig religious enemies isn't too much. But stacked with the other mod we've got, the Orders of Chivalry mod, it makes it extremely powerful. We're basically doing double damage. So we should be fine here. Even though this is a little bit of a risky attack. What is that? It's a river crossing. Okay. We should be good. Don't worry about it. We should be absolutely fine here. Yeah, we're going to crush them. Not even remotely a problem there. 1,000 losses versus 12,000. You have... you have, House Kumraig, you have messed with the wrong... You have messed with the wrong guy. Of all the places to invade in the world. And all the places to invade in this fragile, fragile world. They went for us. Really? Oh, God. Leon Deusvold, you are not looking good, my friend. He's got ambitious, at least. He might not come out too much of a terrible diplomat. He's got affectionate, can become kind, content, or trusting. Obviously, if it becomes kind, that would be fantastic. Idolizer can become ze zealous or erudite. If he gets, like, kind and, and, and zealous, he might not be too bad here. Uh, even though he's not exactly the person we want leading our, leading our, you know, religious holy order. He's not exactly suited to that much, but hey. So now I'm just going to march him over to the capital instead of raising those boats. It turns out boats are really, really expensive. Right, that only took us a couple of months. We're basically already at the capital. We only lost about a 1,000 men as well. This should be a very, very easy siege. Now, the reason I'm keeping the boats down is because we're going to have the boats raised for quite a long time. Because I'm immediately going to go back and try and save those Catholics over in the HRE. Let's try and save them from, from the wrath of Perun here. Assault this down. This should be done in no time. One more assault, and then we'll pick our troops up, and we'll immediately head back out to battle here. Oh, god damn it! really? Okay. Um, I'm probably just going to go for this province then, because that's way too defended. Oh, my god. All these places are well defended, huh? Um, have you got anywhere that I could just quickly attack? Yeah, that one's a little bit better. He's got the levies raised in some of these. 1,600 men. We're looking at 1,600 men or 1,400 men. Head over there. Let's assault this one down in stakes. I can't afford to lose too many forces when we are obviously go about to go and fight yet another god. I've encountered Donatus Kremen many times while carrying out my duties in the order, and it allows for a pleasant conversation. This is friendship. This is only ever friendship. How dare you suggest otherwise? What do you want? 
You want us to donate to charity? Of course we shall. Of course we all this gold we're making from our from our defenses, from our holy wars, from whatever else. Uh excuse me. Have they got back war score? Oh, for the love of God, really? <laughs> okay, fine. Alright, fine. I see how it's gonna be. Let's just take out the capital then. Alright. They are they are doing a lot of damage very quickly, huh? Oh, send in the boats. There's me trying to save money here because we're having to donate and do all sorts of things like that. It's not it's not it's not gonna happen. We need to stop this war quickly, otherwise they're just gonna keep clawing back war score over and over and over. Stop this madness right now. This is getting out of hand. Right, 94%. Uh, hopefully, if we kill this army and count siege this, that should be it. You know, that's going to be a little more battle war score. I assume we're not capped yet. Oh, we are. Oh, but it's a defensive war. Yeah, no, of course we're not. The battle of whatever that says. I've been itching for a fight. We haven't, because that would be fairly ungodly. But we are going to duel this man. We're not a coward. Um, it didn't happen anyway, so that's fine. We didn't have to We didn't have to kill anyone today. I love the priorities this year. Yeah, look, I want to come and help. Please. I'm, I'm going to come and help. We did have other priorities, like literally the defense of our realm. There we go. Okay. Goodbye. Done. Severe and prepare invasion of Arles has ended. We have won. That gave us a decent amount of gold, and now we will donate it all to our good friends in the Benedictine Order. We're apparently in debt. Really? We owe moneylenders a debt? Oh, I didn't even realize that. Well, obviously, we'll pay this back first because the temple vassals don't approve of us being in debt to anyone, obviously. Um, now, let's donate to charity as well. I'm going to mark that special interest. There you go, my friend. So we still we still sort of came out in profit from all of that. Let's uh, let's get our troops back to the capital and sort of pick up any others who might have. Yeah, they've reinforced. We're fine. I'm going to bring Brother Lubbergett to this, this, this campaign because I feel like he's going to be very necessary here. Where are my boats? Oh, because we had enemy occupations, didn't we? Here he is. What's he like? Frail? Uh, he's not bad. He's a very good diplomat, but unfortunately our, our Holy Order needs more than that, so I don't believe you're going to be our heir here. Um, diplomacy plus two, or charitable to give diplomacy plus three. There we go. 19 diplomacy. Very, very good to say these characters whose education I mostly ignored. Um, oh man, if only we could get a couple more boats. Oh, we can. Hey, well, that's, that's alright then. We'll, we'll try and send a force of at least 10,000. It's not going to be quite that, but it will do nonetheless. Uh, send you guys. Let's split these down to see if we fit anyone else. Oh, that's a real shame. Wait, we can? We're fine? Boom. Okay, we're up to 8,700. Slightly more than we took with us last time, and this time I'm also going to bring uh, Archangel Lubbergett as well. Just act as a distraction. Give the HRE time to take back some of their holdings again. We'll go for the capital. Count siege whatever tribal holdings we can. Merge you guys together. Let's see what we can do. And right on cue there, the Mongols did, in fact, take control. So this is uh, Tengri's other son. Is His human son is the one he put on the throne. Maybe that's appropriate, huh? So we need to go and track down a quality 5 heretical artifact to send off to China to, to ensure a peace deal between us and Tengri against the Mongol Empire. And then we'll sit them onto Olympus. Now, these guys are going to be at their height. You know, they're obviously the most powerful... They're ever going to be right now. How is the Western Protectorate looking? Not too bad. He's got a shit ton of gold, though, huh? Um, right, so what sort of artifact do we want to ship off to China, then? Um, any sort of rare artifact. So I'm just going to type in... Oh, well, let's think. We've got to go Not My Religion to start off with. Let's go Not My Religion. Not My Religion Group is probably more appropriate. Rare artifact. We'll sort by... Apparently, this dude in East Anglia. Oh, Undead. There's an Undead... House Godwin, what happened? Um... Quality 3. Does that really count as a rare artifact, huh? We need to go Diplo Range as well. Um, and we need, also need to go Ruler. So that should help narrow it down somewhat. Christian Icon, Drawable Horse Armor. What's Odin got? Um, oh, what is that thing? Oh, he's got some really rare Sumanesco Sword. We could try and grab that because Odin's not using it. But I feel like trying to steal from a god in his insanely, you know, his insanely fortified, really rooted in there in, in, in Sweden. I feel like that's probably not the best bet. Um, let me see what I can try. What about you? Again, still nothing. Maybe I should be looking for specific artifacts. I feel like it's a much, much better idea. Let's go for, um, what is it? The Yadatashi? Uh, apparently it does not exist. Okay, I might be spelling that wrong as well. Um, I'll see if I can find, like, the Sword of Muhammad or something in that case. Here we go. This might be it. Uh, there it is. Boom. That's quality four. We need something slightly better than that if you've got it. Spent horse armor. What have you got, my friend? Another Sword of Muhammad. How many did he have? Um, another one as well. Damn it. Okay, let me see what I can pull up here. Here's an interesting one. A Hellenic Old Germanic. Oh, so what are these? Are these are like the, what, the Varangian Guards? Something along those lines? He happens to have the pelt of the Nemean Lion. Quality 5. It's obviously a Hellenic artifact. They're one of the Olympian artifacts. So if we can steal that, send it off to China, it is quality 5. So that would absolutely do the trick. He's also not a particularly impressive character, so we should be able to get this absolutely no problem. I've said that before, and we've obviously failed multiple times. Let's take Archangel Lubbergett. Let's do it. I think this could be, uh, this could be very, very good for us. So, we are also about to launch the attack against, uh, against Kiev here, so I'll keep a close eye on this as well. Right, okay, this takes precedent, because this will stop Zeus, though. 
Force my way inside. 82% chance of success. Come on, game. Don't screw me here. 85% chance of success. Again, we should be good. This is just a random dude. Different religion. Different culture. All this various stuff. There's nothing special about him at all. Splits up to cover more ground. He has no artifact defense either. Whoa. Whoa, Zeus failed. How? Oh my god, look at how much money he's got. What the hell? 132,000. So Perun and Zeus, their war has ended and Perun actually won. That's great. That's actually fantastic news. In fact, maybe we should send the Chinese after Perun instead. I don't know. We'll decide when we... Oh, come on. How? Well, I always said that this mod is balanced and I can't really, can, I can't really tell that about now, huh? Fight your way out. I think we can absolutely fight our way out here, huh? Success depends on your physical strength. 14% chance we gain the trait wounded. 7% chance we gain the trait imprisoned. 43% chance successfully escaping. Let's do it. Fight our way out. And we have... We failed our heist, but we did make our way out there. Man. That's... that's oh, that's a setback. We're gonna have to wait a few more years, and then we'll, we'll try it again. It's, a, it's not a huge problem, but it is a setback. I mean, another great reason for converting this place over, and I didn't even realize this at the time, is that we can't convert tribal holdings into a castle unless we're Catholic. I, I genuinely had no idea that was a mechanic. So, or it's probably more likely that it has to be your religion, right? So, this tribe that we've been building up the past couple of episodes now is capable of being upgraded to a castle. I'm going to wait first and, and finish up getting all the upgrades for it, because it is generally cheaper. And I would rather use prestige to upgrade it and then have those convert into full-blown buildings, rather than spend nothing but gold. This gives us options, you know, whereas just with gold, when you're out, you're out. So, with this one, we can upgrade it to a castle as well, but like I said, we have to convert this place to Catholic first. Hopefully, it won't take too long. What's our, what's our chance to convert yearly? 10% yearly. That's actually not too bad. And then, subject religion also is 60% yearly, so we're at least going to convert some of our courtiers, if nothing else, right? So, we are back, of course, over in, in, uh, in, in Ukraine here, or whatever the hell the equivalent is. Crimea is apparently the kingdom of these days. Let's take these guys out, and again, we're, we're here to just... Get a little bit of cash, you know, loot their holdings, which I guess is essentially what we're doing, right? And then also try and just weaken them. That's all I'm interested in doing right now. We're, we're, I'm not here to win. I don't think we could even win if we wanted to. Uh, how many troops they got now after their war with Zeus, though? Oh, God, 30,000. I feel like they've got more. 500 events spawned, 10,000 in retinue size, and 10,000 hired. To be fair, if they didn't have this utter mountain of money, fucking hell. If they didn't have this utter mountain of money, we would be fine. Because they would only have... I mean, what, 20,000 men? I would give us a fighting chance at that point. I really, really would. Because obviously, we're way more coordinated. Our our government type gives us some bonuses. Obviously, we've, we've got the, the angels on board as well. How is this? We haven't had any events about summoning though, this time around, have we? Obviously, we started learning how to do summoning so that we could... Uh, we Oh. Oh, no. So this was our kingdom that we set up last episode. Do you remember when we went to war with, uh, with, with Alba? Zeus is now trying to take over... Aragon, our new Catholic kingdom, our our crusader kingdom, if you will. Shit. Um, I feel like I've got to say yes. My god, now we are stretched very thin. Last episode we fought Alba and Asgard. This time around we're fighting Olympus and Russia. Incredible. Oh shit, that's bad. There's no way in hell we can win that. I'm sorry. But even with all the troops we've got now, even if we ran them up and bought them over, I don't think there's a chance we can win that. Zeus is personally leading troops as well. Oh, sorry, this is... Oh, this isn't Zeus, though. This is just one of the... And who are you exactly? Oh, he's another god anyway. Zeus's son. Strategos Theo, Theophilatikos. Theophilatikos. Uh, the Omniscient. With his 32 Martian. Of course, his crazy amount of bonuses he gets for that. Morale defense, morale damage. Oh, my lord. And then, of course, his area zone as well. Yeah, I feel like I'm not overly confident on that one. Now, what else does this... Vile Blood of Zeus. What did that give again? Just a rest chance. Easy to revoke tiles. Shit. Um... That might be a lost cause. That Crusader Kingdom we tried to set up, I think I think that's gone. I'm going to focus on Perun. I'm sorry. I'm just going to have to let you guys go. Good luck. Because, like I said, we wouldn't even be able to stop that. This, we can at least help ourselves and try and help the HRE at the same time. Goodbye, my friends. We're turning our back on you, but that's only because there are others who also need our help. There are others who just can't defend themselves so easily, and that's the poor, innocent citizens, oh God, of the HRE. Um, There he is. Grand oh, wait, wait, wait. Grand Prince Spike Toe? Spick Toe? Uh, it's gonna arrive in where? Oh, to the province we're in now. Let them come to us. River crossing. Now, Grand Prince would imply to me that you are the son of... Who, and who are we looking for here? Anybody leading troops? Oh my god, maybe he's not actually the son of Perun. Which means that we might be able to win this with Brother Lovaget. Wait, hang on, they are half morale as well. Oh my god, we actually might have a chance. No, we definitely don't have a chance. It's 90... Oh my god, they bought shitty commanders. Who are you? Grand Prince Spiketoe is... 
Just a random duke. He's just a random duke. Oh, come on, God. We might be okay here. So we've got Brother Lobbergat on the left flank. We've got us on the center. And then we've got Guy de Cavalhon on, the, of course, on the, uh, on the right flank there versus... Okay, so he's got no commander, 14 and 12. We might be able to win this. They've got over double our troops, but we might actually be able to win it. Holy shit, we're going to do it. We've taken a lot of losses there. Oh my god, we took a lot of losses. but we've And we barely put a dent in his own armies. But that was good. I'm very impressed by that. 41% war score. You are welcome. Let's go to Kiev. Let's try and hit Kiev while we're here. And where are they going to? Oh my god, they're retreating into us. Accidentally, great idea. Okay, cool. So now we can start doing scenario here. Minus 21%. You know what I said? Well, I wasn't going to try and win this. Suddenly, I'm feeling very overconfident. This might be a horrible mistake, but I'm actually going to try and do it. Speed is our goal. The quicker we can do this, the better. They've got more troops than us. If it's a war of attrition, they're going to win. Never fight wins for in the rush. We know that. We stole his spices. That'll teach you. My God, take that, Perun. Look at that. I don't think we'd have been able to get back to here before they'd won this war. Goodbye, my friend. I'm sorry. I tried to set up a Crusader Kingdom. It was... It was it was an honest bet. It was it was it was overzealous. It was definitely a risk and it definitely didn't pay off. Oh god, here we go. Ah shit. Perun himself, huh? Perun is coming in. 3,500 versus 6,600. He's taking over crossing, but he is a god. How can you kill a god? Let's see. Is is the power of Archangel Lubaga and us combined enough to stop him? He just insta wiped our center. Did you see that? He just instantly wiped out our center. And there's me thinking we were overpowered because we have these holy traits. He annihilated us. Oh my god, this might be... This might be really bad. I feel like... Oh, to be fair, we killed a lot of his troops, but he himself is, is unkillable. Like, like Archer and Lubbergat and extremely lost all of their troops. In fact, it was only Guy that managed to keep the whole of the right flank together. We need to, we need to retreat and lick our wounds. 19% lot. I've, I've helped out. We've got it from like what? We got it from minus 50 down to whatever it was and then back up to 70, minus 78, back down to minus 19. I'm doing my best, but I'm not sure I can, uh, I'm not sure I can do any more. I'm not sure I can do any more. Okay, he wants to do secluded penance. I think that might be best. Oh my god. These pantheons. <laughs> Send help. Please send help. We retreat to our island to lick our wounds. Let's do some penance then. See if see if we are truly on the right path. See if the, see if the Lord can guide us a little bit here. Thank you. Um, where is where is uh, how do we, how do we do? That? Oh, there it is. Do penance. Absolutely. God shall be my companion. We're gonna begin our seclusion and see if there is any way we can be guided out of this. Luckily, we're improving relations with Filka. Oh, it's our neighboring states, isn't it? Because Asgard is right there. Oh my God. Thank you for watching. I am quickly going to nip round and see what all the Patreon houses are up to, because I think we've got some really interesting stories. You know, we had the King of France's family becoming the Pope. We've got, you know, the, the, the Madness household becoming our court chaplain. I'm going to see if I can track everyone down, and we'll do a quick overview. As far as the actual adventures of, 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 of uh, Antis and Extremely going, that's going to be it for today. So if you're not interested in any of the rest of the stuff, now's your time to bounce. Thank you for watching, nonetheless. Let me see if I can dig everyone up then, and we'll sort of see what's happening in the world outside of our own realm for a little bit. So I've tried to track down all of the Patreon houses. I found a few. I think I found almost all of them. There might be a couple that have slipped through the cracks here, but but it's it's there's been a lot of changes to the world. Let's phrase it that way. So oh this kid this kid ignore this kid just has a good artifact that I've marked for next episode. I actually did that during the episode. But I forgot to mention it. So we've got House of Broptum here, still holding strong under under the the child of Apophis here. So this is it's Apophis's. Wait, what? Zapophis and the Chinese Emperor Dragon's old Chinese Emperor Dragon's grandson. My god, that's some cool breeding they've got going on there. Yeah, look at that. So Apophis's grandson married Oh, it's it's too confusing. Anyway, it is it, a descendant from China and that. And then they, of course, House Abrupt in there, still holding strong. Strong in the opposite world with their 30 marshal. Uh let's give Solomon doing a little bit of magic there as well. What about House Abrupt now? They're doing nine living members. It's fairly impressive. I thought we'd have fallen further than that, to be completely honest with you. We've got Robert Keith Teeth, lovely beef, King of France. Of course, we already knew that because we saw him last episode. House Keith Teeth, lovely beef are doing pretty well. Ten living members, not too shabby. They do have a fairly garbage patriarch, I will admit, right now. Robert III of France with his 21 learning, and that's unfortunately just about it right now. We've got Gorcha Bonaparte. So, 
the Bonaparte family obviously was was originally Napoleon. They're rich in the kings of plants. Basically, were overthrown. They still control Paris though, which is pretty decent. Do they have anything else they got going for them? They've got joys. They've still got all of Charlemagne's swords there, so they've still got a little bit, I would say, of of their history. Even though they've lost all of the kingdom, we've got uh, Arth, Arth, Arthus. Arthus, Cumraig, of course we saw them during the episode, so I won't talk about them too much, our mortal enemies who try to take our entire kingdom. How is the house doing? 33 living members. My god, prolific. Apparently they also have, oh of course, the Blood of Vortigern. Yeah, I was going to say that they've founded a bloodline, but that's actually the one they started with. We've got House Madness. Now, we already know a little bit about House Madness here because we saw um, that I made one our court chaplain. However, I tracked one down who's still got God, and I don't know what, how. Because his father doesn't have God, but his grandfather does. So I'm wondering if there's a very, very small chance to win if you've got, like, a god somewhere in your family. Because it uses a different system to inheritance. Because, obviously, if a god has a child, they become a demigod unless both parents are god. So it's not like this has a chance of being inherited. I wonder if there's a way to reawaken, like, old god's blood in your family somewhere. Which is, um... A kind of a cool mechanic, but kind of also horrifying, because if we do actually remove these pantheons, the last thing we want is those guys taking control. Then we've got the House of Hells in here, uh, Kings of Denmark, they've actually managed to grab most of, like, was that Pomerania? I think, yeah, Pomerania, and then most of Lithuania as well. Now, these were the original descendants of, where are they, like, great aunts, there we are, Astrid, Astrid the Judge of, uh, L Latuvis, don't know how you say that apparently died out, and then her only son was sent to China. That's real sad. So, a, a branch house, but, but still going fairly strong there. House Pearl has fallen really, really far. So, these were originally the Dukes of Aquitaine. They had a whole bunch of land, basically the kingdom of Aquitaine, right? Lost their, lost their almost kingdom size duchy. Then they lost the duchy last generation as well. Apparently, her older sister lost it. Uh, uh, God knows how. We should probably check that. Uh, let's take a look at history. Um, oh, it's gone. It's just destroyed because they don't hold enough land. Man, that's a real loss there, but House Pearl, I assume, still five of the members, they might be one of the first ones to go extinct. I'll see if I can bail them out in some sort of future crusade or something like that. Then we have the Kings of Scotland here, whose name I'm not going to even try and say for fear of getting it. So incredibly wrong, I offend everyone. Two Damascus Steel Swords. Wait, are both of which of their dynasty? They really are. They've got two ancestral swords. I guess a branch house might have founded one as well there, because he did have a sibling who was a king. Kind of impressive stuff. These guys are doing super, super well. 29 living members. Not much of a shocker, seeing as they are deep in the Celtic lands there. Only really got to worry about Odin there grabbing, you know, Shetland and uh, Shetland and Orkney up here. Um, and also, of course, is that Faroe, Faroe Islands too? Those are their sort of immediate threats, their immediate neighbours. They haven't really got too much to concern themselves with, so there's no real surprise their duchy is going super, super strong. And then finally, we have House von Pickelsdorf of Lotharingia, whose flag seems to have changed quite a lot, because I definitely didn't do it like that. Anyway, these guys are also doing, obviously, incredibly well. They've got a massive, massive trunk, probably about a third of what's remaining of the Holy Roman Empire there, so quite an influential dynasty. Not only that... He married, through some genius through some genius plays here, the Queen of Franconia non-matrilineally. So House Picudors is not only going to have Lotharangia, they're also going to get Franconia as well during that next generation. That's some good plays right there, and you can see that she is House von Picudorf. Picudorf doing the intrigue play in the background. Very impressive stuff. Anyway... That's a, that's a nice little update. We'll try and do this every couple of episodes or whenever you guys want to see them because uh, uh, I think it's kind of impressive to see what some of these houses are up to. Like, some have already fallen quite far and some have risen quite spectacular, I think. I'm, I'm genuinely impressed by Pickledorf there. In the meantime, let's give a shout out to these guys who made the whole series possible, who made YouTube still viable in 2019. A big thank you to Alpha Scuff, Asuna Kirito, Moses, Average Gamer 419, Bacon Kitten, Sedini, Crazy Pack, Croesus, Donald, Fukuno Vasquez, Fluffernutta, Fungus King, Gogolus, Harik, Jimbo, Josh Lindine, Tesla, Justin Wallace, Kanan Carter, Michael Mullen, Mr. Smug, Musk Grateful, Nathan Flores, Necrofilm, Pelvis Presley, Scott, Skaz, Shayok Sinclair, Surth All the Swedes, Stanis Samanis, The Forsaken One, Seabag Cruz, Tom Terry Team, Tyler Kendall, Baku as Backers. Thank you for your support at the Insanity Lovers on Patreon. Thank you for making the channel possible. Thank you for making YouTube viable. And if any of you don't have your houses in game, of course, please let me know and I will definitely treat you wherever you want in the world. Whatever pantheon you want to play under, feel free to let me know and I'll, I'll give you some land in one of their duchies or as one of the houses kicking around somewhere over there. In the meantime, a thank you as well needs to go out to Asro, Adam Person, Akari, Andrew Wilson, Attila, Bordoom, Ben Trope, Betamus Max, Better Valerian, Chris, David Van Diepen, Don, Don Connie 217, Easier to Pronounce Name, Exploding Knees, Fraser Brennan, Gabriel Faulkner, Gabriel Van Ders, Gaz, Genji Turka, Grey, Haji Dumar, Hancock, I See the Great, Irish, Isaac, Israel, Jacob Wolf, Jay Lara, James Barnes, Jason, Jose, Yuan DeVries, John Holiday, Jordan Campbell, Joseph Beer, Justin Plot, Justin Walters, Lemon Stark, Lesme, Luan and Thomas, Luke Wallace, Matthew, Monty, Nathaniel Lindbergh, Nick, Noah Gallimore, Pan, Samuel Panthpearl, Baton Denisar, Russian Oligarch, Billionaire, The Bloody Knight, The Insane Pickle, Wesley Grayson, Will Wade, Wolfie, Yorker, Zach Piller, and Zico too. See you guys all tomorrow for hopefully some big old powerful fortress building.